<coughs> good morning. Uh, let's turn to each other and say good morning with a smiling face. I have a, um, a two good news. Um, you, as you all know, uh, I've been lonely last week or so uh, since my wife left me um, with five other ladies. Um, they're all gone, but I just received a cut talk this morning, right, right this hour. Uh, all six of them are, f are coming from, from Hong Kong to Korea. They went from L.A. to Beijing, L.A. to Korea, Korea to Beijing, Beijing to Hong Kong, and Hong Kong to Korea now. Uh, but they just took a picture, all six of, six of them in business seat. They were all upgraded. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's, that's amazing, all six of them. Uh, how can that be? I don't know, um, you know. Uh, if they were with me, probably they, um, they are sitting in the economy by now. <laughs> uh, I guess, um, I don't know, my wife is a very strange person. Uh, she's, um, she, she's a blessed person. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, the second uh, news is, uh, uh, as you all know, uh, Mr. Hwang in uh, KM service, uh, she's been receiving this, uh, this, this medicine for his lung cancer. Uh, he's really doing well. He's now uh, start exercising. You know, he's a, a Taekwondo master, so he's been he's, he's, uh, slowly exercising, and he's feeling good enough to go to Myanmar, so he, 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 um, he applied for uh, uh, Myanmar and vision trip uh, with all his family, so... He told me this morning, uh, again, in, in the man's bathroom, uh, <laughs> uh, he, he said, oh, Pastor Shin, I'm feeling really well, so I'm really happy. Um, I, think, uh, I think God works out uh, very strangely, sometimes unexpectedly, uh, but for the good of all, really. Um, it's really amazing. I, I think the reason why my wife is so... So blessed is because uh, she's, a, she's a good citizen of kingdom of heaven. Um, as I see her and, you know, as you all know her, uh, she's, her heart is in, in, in God. Uh, and I think in the eyes of God, I guess she is a good citizen. Uh, me ain't. But anyways, uh, uh, God really uh, blesses. Uh, so turn to each other and ask this question, are you a good citizen? of kingdom of God, okay? Mm. Um, <clears throat> We've been talking about uh, in the perspective of God uh, last several months. Um, I, I often wonder uh, what was the heart, what, what, was, what was in the heart of Abram when he left uh, uh, hometown. You know, we all started with God saying to Abram, leave your household and, and go where I tell you to go, right? Uh, we all know that Abram uh, obeyed to God and, and left. Um, but I, I often wonder, what would be uh, in Abram's heart? Uh, if I were Abram, um, even though I obeyed, I'd be probably be a little bit scared and a little bit iffy, you know, doubtful. Uh, would it be okay? I don't know. Uh, he would be really faithful that, you know, everything's going to be fine because God told me to go. Uh, I don't know. And when, when, when they left to Canaan, um, it's my understanding that Abraham was not a saint. Uh, he was just a normal, ordinary man. And God gradually picks him up and and, and trains him and, and refine him, and eventually he becomes the father of faith. But anyways, you know, I guess in God's heart, if you, if you follow me, you know, despite of all the, you know, uh, doubts and, and lingering thoughts, I will take care of you. I guess that would be logical, you know. Um, if you really follow me, I will take care of you. Not only I will bless those bless you, and curse who curses you, but also every step of the way, I'll be with you. Wouldn't you agree? I guess, you know, God knew what was 
in the hearts of Abraham. And, and you know, if he, if he follows not knowing fully, um, I think God, I, think I, I would bless him too. I, you know, that's why God takes care of him and, and, and blesses him. So turn to each other and say, do you trust God? Uh, I'm going to tell those of you who really cannot trust God fully, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I imagine God would want us to trust Him fully, uh, but sometimes, sometimes, you know, we fall into a doubt. We fall into a doubt. And God says, if you are going to follow me, I want you to follow me with your crosses on your back. Um, sometimes, even after we come to church, you know, things don't go well. And I don't know, like, uh, if I find out that I have a cancer, despite of all the services, all the, you know, uh, works that I've done for God, I might be disappointed, you know. About this time last year, uh, we, we found out that Mr. Wang had a lung cancer and you know, you probably don't know Mr. Wang very well, but he, he's been a very faithful person. He came to this church or um, a very strange circumstance. His, his father-in-law uh, came to Korea, I mean, came to America from Korea to visit uh, about 15 years ago uh, with, uh, with uh, a liver cancer, uh, end-stage liver cancer. So he brought his father-in-law on his back to my clinic and as I saw the patient, you know, I knew, you know, he, he's, he's going to be done in a couple of weeks. So I told him, you know, he's going to die in America. Um, so, you know, he died uh, subsequently. And, and one, of our, one of my uh, nurse uh, oikos the family for about five, six years. And then they came to this church. And then uh, eventually uh, they have two children and... And Mr. Wang became a very faithful person. I mean, uh, he was very slow to begin, but he became a very strong person. Uh, he been to Philippines and all, you know, a bunch of places. Not only that, but also he's been serving the church and, and serving the group. He, he was really faithful. But then last year, about this time, or early January, he's been coughing, and, and we found out that he had a cancer. And, <clears throat> and lung cancer is really not, not a good news, not a good news. Uh, and there are certain kinds of cancers in the lung, and he had, he had a you know, bad kind of cancer. So, so I knew you know, uh, he's in a bad situation. So if I were him, I probably felt really bad. And we all know he went to you know, Korea, and, and then the situation got worse and worse. And, and we basically given up. At the end of the year, about last year, uh, we, we, we kind of gave up. But somehow, you know, um, I received a, an email uh, through Tom and Steve, and, and somebody came to Steve and told him about this, this, this medication, and, and, you know, we happened to test for it, and he happened to. I mean, that's amazing. And I, sometimes, I, you know, sometimes God does not work in a miraculous way, but sometimes He does. He does. And when he does, the circumstance is very strange, you know. How can that be? But anyways, uh, he uh, received the medication and he's really feeling, feeling good. Um, so I'm really happy. Let's give God the glory. Hmm? Um, <clears throat> so nevertheless, after he found out he had a cancer, he really carried his cross, you know. He, he stayed faithful. And I guess that's what God wants us, you know. Um, sometimes things don't go well, but God says, you know, nevertheless, if, if you are going to follow me, follow me not only in the good times, but also bad times. Sometimes we have to even carry the cross for other people, you know, uh, and then I'll take care of you. Amen? And then we learn that if we follow him, um, he's like an uh, orchestra conductor, you know, with hundreds and hundreds of people, or sometimes 300 of people playing all different instruments, just like us, we are all different kind of people. God knows the perfect timing, and He uses all of us. And, and all He wants us 
to do is realize that we are the citizen of this kingdom of God. Amen? And we are the citizen of kingdom of God. And, and I think if we become a, kingdom, a citizen of kingdom of God, then we should become a good citizen. Amen? Good citizen. In the eyes of God, in the eyes of God, we should be a good citizen. Amen? Sometimes we don't think like that, you know. As a citizen of this country, we always ask, you know, what this country can do for me, you know. How about the traffic? We complain about the traffic, you know. Irvine traffic's gotten really bad, isn't it? Huh? And so we complain about that. We complain about weather. We complain about politics. We complain about all that, you know. But in the eyes of government, they might say, you know, how much tax did you pay? How much tax did you cheat? You know, I mean, if they know everything, I mean, you know, sometimes we, we have to really become a good citizen. Amen? I travel all the, you know, all different kinds of countries, and, you know, I see few countries, you know, some countries, they're very dirty, they're very unclean. It's because people litter, you know, people just throw out garbage, you know, and I'm looking, it's not a good citizenship. You know, if you want to be a good citizen, if you want to be a, a good nation, you know, instead of complaining all that, we should really become a, a good citizen. Amen? If I carry a little further, if you allow me, you know, don't complain about your wife or husband. You become a better husband or better wife. Don't complain about your children or parents. You know, you become a, a better parent or better children, then that would be good too. Did I carry too far? <laughs> so turn to each other and say, I'll be good. Huh? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Well, and today, uh, sometimes people say, uh, how can I be a good citizen? You know, I, I, I want to be a good citizen of the kingdom of God. Uh, there are bigger people, you know, more famous people. But I want to be a good citizen too. How can I be? Well, let's look into the Bible and find out the answer. Today, uh, what we are going to read is the conversion scene of Apostle Paul, or Saul's conversion. It is very famous, um, very famous. Uh, however, um, uh, we, don't, we don't really truly understand the full weight of this conversion story. So let's... Um, Let's listen to chapter 26 of Book of Acts, verses 12 through 18, okay? Before, before we begin, um, uh, I want to tell you, uh, um, you know, when, when you think certain thing is important, what do we do? We usually either scream louder, right? Uh, you know, when baby, baby is about a year old and a mom and dad kind of ignores the baby, you know what baby does? Baby goes, ah! You know, they, they start screaming, you know, pay attention to me too. Uh, in the Bible, uh, God does that similar thing. If it is important, you know what God does? He repeats, you know, he repeats. So many times Jesus say, truly, truly, I tell you. Or amen, amen, I tell you. He, he does that. He uses the double, you know. You know, in English, we do that too, you know, we, we, we repeat. Koreans don't repeat. You know what Koreans does? We, we emphasize with, with harsh words, you know, you, know, you, you work very hard, you know. <laughs> but anyways, in this instance, God repeats not twice. He repeats three times. So this conversion story of Saul is mentioned in Book of Acts three times, three times. However, in these three times, all situation is different, Okay. First situation, first circumstantial situation is that Luke is writing. Okay, Book of, Book of Acts is written by Luke. We all know that, right? So Luke heard from Saul, or Apostle Paul, talking about his own conversion. Okay, and later on he writes it down. So this is what I heard that Apostle Paul was talking to me. That's the first, first time. Second time he writes... I mean, the second time the book of Acts mentions is when Apostle Paul becomes an apostle, goes out the mission trip, first trip, second trip, 
third trip. At the end of the third trip, he's coming back to Jerusalem. And people say, if you go back to Jerusalem, you will? You will surely die. You know, you will surely die. And Apostle Paul says, I'm ready to die. For the glory of God, I'm ready to die. Don't block me in. He goes into the Jerusalem. And sure enough, the mob of Israelites or Jewish people surrounds him. And then, they, in their own tongue, Apostle Paul is giving his own testimony to his people. This was how I got converted. That's the second time that the book of Acts mentions the conversion story of Apostle Paul. Okay? And then, sure enough, he gets arrested, and then he goes into the jail. Okay? And then he stays in jail for about three years. And one day, the king of Israel, never, you know, even though he's a puppet king from Rome, he's nevertheless a king. He wanted to find out what happened to this, apostle, this Saul guy. So king visits Apostle Paul. Okay? So now, at third time, Apostle Paul is giving his own conversion testimony to the king. Okay? Not to the people, but to the king. So as we read it, we get this nuance that he's very polite because he's talking to a king. Okay? So this is the third time that, uh, that uh, the book of Acts talks about the conversion story of Apostle Paul. Very important. Very important. Unfortunately, most of the time, we don't feel that importance or we don't understand the importance. So we are going to try to answer that question. Okay, so let's look at chapter 26, book of Acts, verses 12 through 18. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, O king, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. <clears throat> As we read it, you know, it is very difficult to get impressed. Uh, we know the story, you know, um, so what? But if Bible mentions it three times, it must be very, very important. But that important doesn't, you know, stab me in the heart. You know, it's just, okay, you know. Um, and then also, there were a few questions that I used to have. Uh, when I, you know, when I become a, a Christian and I start reading the Bible, and, and there were a few uh, questions. Number one question is that I later found out that that um, that the entire New Testament uh, was written by, uh, or a majority of the uh, New Testament is written by Apostle Paul, right? Uh, you know, let's say uh, New Testament is about this thick. More than half, about 60% of the New Testament is written by Apostle Paul. Okay? And then it, it came to me, you know, how can that be? You know, we all know Apostle Paul was not the original disciples, right? Uh, you know, Apostle Paul was not an, an, an original apostle. People say in order to be an apostle, you have to live with Jesus while he was living. So in that case, Apostle Paul is not a full apostle. How do I say it? It's a less ranking. It's less ranking, you know, officer. I mean, to me, you know. Who's the higher ranking officers? Peter, John, there are 12 of them, right? I mean, you know, there were originally 12 of them and one became kaput and, you know, they replaces him, right? So they nevertheless have 12 apostles. Now, to me, in my common sense tells me, 
Okay? Jesus picked, handpicked these 12 people, right? And then he calls them, these are my disciples, right? Then, the, when the New Testament is written, who should write majority of the New Testament? Twelve disciples, right? I mean, you know, either Peter or John or, you know, Matthew. I mean, they should write more, you know. All combined, those 12 people should write far more than half of the New Testament. And that's my common sense. But I found out this guy, Apostle Paul, wrote more than half of it. And I'm thinking, how can that be? You know, it's, it's, I mean, I know it's not a life and death question, but it kind of, you know. And then as I was reading this story, you know, we all know that Apostle Paul becomes blind. You know, he's on the way to Damascus and he sees the light and he fell off the horses and then he becomes blind. So people led him to Damascus and about three days later, you know, some guy comes up and, and pray for him. And then he opens his eyes after some scab, okay? Some kind of scab comes off of his eyes. And, and I'm thinking, um, you know, why and scab? You know, it, it, you, see the, you see the light and maybe you are blinded because, you know, when you, when you see a blinding light and, and, and you are blinded for a while, unable to see for a while, but, but what is this scab falling, you know? Those are the little lingering questions that, that, that kind of prevents me uh, from going into fully immersed in, in Christianity. Those are the you know, questions that I used to have. And uh, after I found out, it was, it was, really, it was really an amazing story. Um, you know, it, it is really fully uh, uh, impact, able to impact a person's heart. So let's dive into it. In order to answer these questions, we have to really think about one question. Why did Saul, this guy, was so fervent persecuting these Christians? Why was he so fervent? I mean, you know, we have to, we have to really know the inside of mind of this Saul person, this, this, this Saul guy, you know. Uh, he, he's 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 um, he's a zealot, you know. Th there was another famous zealot among the uh, Israelites. Do you know who are, who is another famous zealot? Judas Iscariot. Yes, he's a, a zealot means a person who is really passionate to do something. You know, um, I guess people's personality can be different. You know, some people are very laid back and kind of how do you say? Um, Okay, <laughs> that's a 21st century, that's, that's X generation language, chill, but uh, my generation is um, Kesera Sera. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Kesera Sera. Okay, any, anyways, uh, it's kind of, you know, some, but some people are very passionate, you know, certain things very, I guess uh, uh, this soul person was very passionate. So what? You know, very, I mean, but uh, the other question that, that we have to answer is, wh what was he passionate about? You know, was, he, was he just enjoy killing? What do you think? Probably not. You know? He did not kill just anybody. He only killed Christians. You know, he's Christians. You know? uh, why was he killing Christians? Why was he killing Christians? The second thing that we have to pay attention is that not only is a zealot, he's a Pharisees. You know, Saul, this person, is a Pharisee. And then, natural question is, who is Pharisees? Okay, Pharisees are following people. If we look at the Old Testament, the first five books are called Pentateuch, right? In, in, in their language, it's, it's Torah, right? I don't know if you ever read the Old Testament, you know? Genesis is very fun, you know? He, you know, just, it's a very fun story. It's a page-turning story, you know. After Genesis, you feel like, man, I'm in the Bible now. I'm going to read the whole book. So you go into Exodus, right, with a full, you know, it's Holy Spirit filled. Yes, this year I'm going to read the whole Bible kind of hard, right? And then you start reading 
Exodus, yes, at the beginning of Exodus, yeah, Moses comes out throwing in, yes, and then they come out of the Egypt and they go into the wilderness, and then you go into your own self, into wilderness. <laughs> Why? Because once they go into wilderness, God starts giving the laws, and laws is one boring. And I go, no, 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 who cares, man? Don't eat the pig. Uh, don't, you know, you get all this, you know. And then, pretty soon, God becomes, you know, the books become very repetitive. And it also it becomes very uh, detailed, you know. And then do this and do that and do that. And then ultimately, it starts becoming very funky. Why? Because it says, if you don't this, kill him. And then you start killing, you know, killing the punishment part. Um, those of you ever disobeyed your parents, raise your hand. <laughs> and guess what? Bible says if you disobey your parents, kill him. <laughs> and go, what the, you know? And then you say, if you break the Sabbath, kill him. You commit adultery, kill him. I mean, it's a kill him, kill him, kill him. It's like, oh my goodness. I mean, there was this guy who gathered manna on an off day, okay, to eat, right? <laughs> just a double portion, in, you know, just a little bit more, or I'm not supposed to go out today, but I'm hungry. So he went out, and the people caught him, you know. He, he was collecting him. And Moses asked God, what should we do? And the answer is, kill him. And you, pretty soon you say, what the... You know, it's, it's too much killing, man. So kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, right? And then it gets worse. At the end of now, you're all the way through the Pentateuch, and now you're coming out, oh my goodness. You're finishing, okay, finishing the Pentateuch, and at the end, it says this. They are about to go into the promised land, right? God says, if you go into promised land, and if you start breaking my law, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you all the way. I'm going to punish you. The people will look at you and you go, oh my goodness. You know, people will turn their faces knowing your story that you disobeyed God and God punishing. He start punishing part. It gets really bad, you know. And most of the time we wonder, oh my goodness, this Torah book is really, really strange and really harsh, Right? And then we get into little more stories. You know, Israel is like Korea, between two big mass of land or big powerful countries, one north and one south, Egypt and Babylon. And when they fight, you know, they fight in between, right? And then we get, we get beat up. Uh, in, in, in Korean proverbs, there is there's this story, you know, two whales fighting, and there's one shrimp in between. Okay, uh, they're just beat up, in, and there are so many bad things happening, you know. And then prophets start coming out and say, The reason why you are being punished, you are going through all this bad problem, is because you broke the law, you, you know, you disobeyed, and you disobeyed. Isaiah says it, Jeremiah says it, and you know, every Ezekiel says it, and they start he hearing that. Can you imagine me telling you, saying, The reason why you get into the car accident is because you smoked? You sinned, didn't you? Huh? The reason why you got sick, because you disobeyed. reason why there was a tornado is because America sinned. Huh? The reason why you know, all these bad things happened because you sinned. You, know, you sinned because you, you know, God will punish you. If I do that all the time, guess what? People start thinking every time bad things happen, they will look. You know? And then, and then, you will start doing, oh my goodness, I'm going to keep this law. And then you try to keep the law, right? You try to follow the, you know. And then you see somebody not doing it. And then because of them, you are being punished. I mean, you know the most wicked way of punishing a group of people is leaving the person who broke the law and the rest of them gets punished. Imagine if you are in, in the army, you know, there are, there are hundreds of us, and then one person came late or, or being sleepy during the sermon, okay? And then 
I stand him up, and then rest of you walk around with this. And, 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 and then pretty soon, everybody will hate that person, wouldn't it? Or let me tell you this story. You know, I, I woke up this morning, early in the morning. I came out, and I saw something very strange. My neighbor coming out, putting his own garbage on my side of the driveway. I don't know if you've ever seen that, you know. It's, and I go, what, kind, what the, you know? It's been going on for three months, you know. Every morning I come out, there's a garbage. What the, you know, they, they moved in about three, three months ago. And it must be, it must be a Korean, you know. Anyways, they, and then, you know, as you all know, we have a we have dog, you know, Bella, right? One, one day I, I came out and, and I opened up the garage and come out and my Bella just shoot out and then he, she chewed on that garbage that next door neighbor put on and, and then must be something wrong and that night, you know, Bella got sick. You know what dogs do when they get sick? You know? You know? <laughs> Where on my bed? And then I woke up this morning and walked out and my neighbor putting another garbage. What do I do? <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, what the, you know? That's what Saul is doing. Because Saul knows, Saul is a very learned person. He knows the full history of Israel nation. He knows Torah. He knows the story. And he knows the prophets. And he's growing up, he's studying, and, and Israel is really being punished in his eyes. He's punished by God. You know, Rome, Babylon, Aram, Egypt, you know, they were just punishing. And there's so much horrific, really, you know, it's just horrific things happening. And he sees him, and he, he's a Pharisee. Pharisees is trying to keep the law and making other people keep the law. And then he finds out that this bunch of people going around saying, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You know, three times a year, you have to come to the temple. You don't have to do that. Wouldn't you go crazy? I mean, he's trying to make Israel as a good nation so that God can bless the nation, you know. But these people just, and, and he's saying, because of you, because of you, this nation is being punished. In fact, while Jesus was alive, we all know Pharisees hated Jesus, right? The reason why is because Jesus going around, you know, not washing his hand and, you know, all that, they just drove crazy. Why are you doing that? Because, you, because of you, all these nations, my family is getting hurt. All Israel, my brother is getting hurt. In fact, one of the high priests says this, you know, it is good to sacrifice one person for the whole nation because that guy is just, just making everything wrong and, and God, is in, in God is punishing us because of him. And that's what apostles, I mean, that's what Saul is thinking. If that is true, then he is justified to get all the Christians and get rid of them. If it requires killing, so be it. And that's what he's doing. So in many a times, he takes these journeys, you know, catching these Christians. To him, he's, he's an exterminator of the, I don't know, bugs or, you know, pests. Because these pests are breaking our country because God looks down and God is punishing our country because of these people, you know? So he's punished. And that's the reason why Saul is punishing these Christians. And then one day, he goes to the trip to the Damascus and then he sees the light, okay? And when light sees, I mean, light appears, Jesus appears. And when Saul sees this light and Jesus something very strange happens. All his life, Saul was trying to get close to God. Yeah? All his life, he's fervently trying to get close to God. However, because of these pests, 
you know, he, he's thinking, if I get rid of these pests, I could get close to God. But when Jesus appears, this young man's soul finally realizes one very crucial fact. You know what that is? That is, oh, that Jesus guy who was crucified a few days ago or some time ago on the cross that died, okay? That Jesus guy was nothing but whom? God himself. And that dawned on me. Imagine, imagine Saul, okay? Saul living, you know, some guy called Jesus comes up and doing you know, all this. To him, he's just another person, obviously, right? He would never guess that one God would appear in the form of human, right? God is spirit, you know, God is God, is God. God is one. Shema Israel is saying God is one, right? So he's thinking God is in heaven, right? He's going to send Messiah. When Jesus walks around, he would never imagine that's God himself, even though Jesus shows the miracles and tells that he's God, never dawned on him. And that's why Pharisees all the time ask Jesus, if you are God, show us the sign. You know, we don't believe you. You are you're not God. Saul was same. You know, he's, so if Jesus is not God, and all these people following Jesus, not following the law, then they are the cause of our or my problem. Yeah? Very logical. It's called airtight logic. Because there is no way that Jesus the guy is a, is a God. So if you follow him and all that, then you, know, you are the pest. And me, being a good citizen of the kingdom of God, I have to serve God. So in order to serve God, guess what? I need to get rid of you. I need to get rid of my neighbor. What do you think? Huh? I should get rid of, I mean, you know. And then I start complaining, you know, what the, you know. And then that guy, that, the neighbor guy, didn't say anything, you know. He's just sees me. Kind of slight smirk on his face. Drove me n more than that, you know. Not smiling, it's just slight smirk. And then he motions to me. So I follow him to his backyard. And then he points his finger. So I looks up. And then we wait. And then some time later, it turns out, it turns out, my son, not a true story, okay? My son orders some strange food during the night. He eats it. And then all this leftover, put it in the bag, toss it to the next door's backyard. So back, next door backyard, you know, every night. So every morning he picks up the garbage and put it up to my driveway. Did I know it? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, I would say, oh my goodness, all this anger that, you know, boiled up against my neighbor would turn into, now don't say Jonathan, I said it's a made up story. <laughs> <laughs> it's called aha moment. I don't know if you ever had this, this moment, you know, you, all of a sudden you realize, you know, have you ever put up on a, a necktie? In order to put a tie, you have to put up a button, you know, and then you find our button on top, and, and sometimes, what the, you know, it, and then you all of a sudden realize, oh my goodness, my first button was crooked, you know? Or, I don't, I don't know if you, if you ever had this, you, you know, I used, I, mean, I used to live in, in Quail Hills, and, and I, you, I have a, a, a salt, um, uh, water softener, water softener, and you know they used to come with like a 50-pound bag. Nowadays it comes in a plastic bag, but long time ago it comes in a uh, on a cloth bag, and they they sort it, you know, and so you you find the end of it and and you have to untie it. 
that sucker is very difficult to untie, you know, you pull out, you know what. And then all of a sudden, you catch your little knob and you, you pull it and you go, and you, you open it up. I don't know if you ever had that. Probably those of you who are very young, so what is he talking about, you know? It, it's a certain way of sewing the, the stuff. And once you, you kind of catch it and, and then you pull it, the whole thing just comes out, you know? It's like that. It's called aha moment. You know, you, you all of a sudden you are like, oh my goodness. That's what's happening. See, Jesus shows up in front of Saul. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And, and Saul goes, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus that you are persecuting. I am your God, basically. Because Saul instinctively know, instinctively knows that this person who shows up in the heaven is God himself. Why? Because book of Moses, I mean, uh, he knows in, Mo, um, in the Old Testament, Moses sees God, Ezekiel sees God, Isaiah sees God, Jeremiah sees God, you know. They all see this God in the heaven. As, as soon as Saul sees Jesus and, and then he, he realizes, oh my goodness, the person who lived and died some time ago on the cross, he is Jesus, that he is God himself. And he, he clicked it. He clicked it. And he go, oh my goodness, if he is Jesus, then all my problems, all the things that I've been worried about, all the things that I am frustrated about, it becomes solved. It clicks. And that's what's happening here. And from then on, Saul is a different person. You know, many a times we think Saul converted. Saul never converted anything. You know, Saul, Saul never changed much. Saul was very fervent. He was very fervent following God. He's trying to follow God, you know. Saul is just, just utterly trying to follow God. And he thinks by keeping the law, he can follow God. And if you don't keep the law, God will punish him. By the way, God will never punish you by car accident just because you sinned. Okay? I mean, that's really silly. But many times that's why we put a cross on the back mirror, right? So Saul is thinking all the time, you know, all these things, bad things happening is because, because I broke the law. But he realizes, oh my goodness. If Jesus is God himself, he's living God, then if he died on the cross, then all the things that humanity is trying to achieve, it is done upon that cross. And he realizes that. And then he's the same person. He's very fervent following God. He was a good citizen. He was a good citizen. He was already passionate. He was already following God. Only problem, he was mistaken. And guess what? That mistake was caused by Satan. I told you many times these days, Satan don't work with snakes. He's done with snakes. Satan usually works with people nowadays. You know, uh, how does he make us fall? It's it's. It's the way that he manipulates our mind, you know. He's very smart. And in fact, in fact, most of the time, most of the time, we think certain thing is very true. And then later on, you know, we find out it's not true. And then that's when we get into trouble. I know I talked about it many times. You know, you know men, men are easier to fall into that trap than ladies. Ladies go, <laughs> men are much more easier to fall into that tra trap. You know why? Because men, uh, we have this tendency to assume. You, you know, men become more, um, it's easier for them to get, how do I say, bija? Huh? Borhol? But hurt? 
is that, is that a real language? <laughs> Jonathan, is that a real thing? But her? I don't trust anybody here but you. <laughs> but her, really? Oh, okay, I'm going <clears> to. <throat> you know why, uh, you, know, you know, men get, I guess, but her all the time. <laughs> Easily, easily, you know, uh, than ladies. Because men, uh, you know, we don't talk very much. We don't talk very much. What we do is we, we, we expect you to understand me. That's what we do. You know, men do that, you know. We don't talk very much, you know. But in us, we, we do think. Believe it or not, we do think. <laughs> Uh, but what we think is that we expect you to understand me without saying anything to you. Not that very, very difficult. Okay, very simple. If you look at me very well, then it's very easy to figure. So we expect that, you know. That's a problem. And that's why we get bored hurt easily. <laughs> because you don't know what we are thinking, is it? Huh? Ladies have very little problem with that. You know why? Because they, they talk. They talk. They talk, you know. They talk, you know. <laughs> they talk on the phone for two hours. I don't know how can they talk. How, how can anybody talk on the phone two hours, you know. And then at the end of the two-hour conversation, guess what they say? Oh, we can't talk on this phone anymore. Let's meet. <laughs> so they meet and, and drink coffee and sit in the Starbucks and take the seat for four hours, you know. And then after four hours, they say goodbye, and then guess what they say? I'll, let, I'll call you back. <laughs> Men are very different, you know. Men, we meet, and after five minutes, we take out the phone. And <laughs> I mean, you understand me, I understand you. That's good enough. <laughs> See, we, we misunderstand each other. I guess Saul made that same mistake, you know. However, when he found out that Jesus was the... Christ. That's what's happening. That's why God is mentioning this episode three times. This is a person he finally realizes, oh my goodness, that Jesus. You know Saul knew Jesus. Saul knew Jesus. Saul heard about Jesus. Saul you know, had many knowledge of Jesus, but he never realized that he was God himself. And this is the moment that the soul, this person, just utterly realized, oh my goodness, this Jesus was God. This Jesus was the Christ. And that's when he realizes. You know, you know, you know when I was young, I thought that if I lived very... Uh, Hardworking, everything would be fine, because I was not used to be very smart. You know, uh, as you all know, on my second grade, I moved into a new town and you know went into a new elementary school, second grade elementary, not kinder. Okay, um, and the teacher said, you know, oh, we have a new student. You know, come on out. So I went out and said, "What's your name?" Said James. You know, in Korean. So she says, you know, turn around and write your name on the blackboard. So I wrote Shin. And then I have two other names, you know. I couldn't write it. And I stood there. And the teacher goes, just go in. So in my head, I said, why is she making me write all these stupid things? And some strange teachers I went in. Can you imagine what teacher was thinking? So what, another stupid guy <laughs> moved in my class. I must be sinned. You know? <laughs> Imagine second grade, you know. But some, somewhere in middle school, I realized, only I need to study. So I studied. And while I'm studying, this, this was what I thought. If I study hard all my life, I'd be happy. But, you know, that was not true. So, when it, and then, you know, I'm thinking, maybe, because, maybe if, I, if I become a doctor, 
I'd be happy. So I did, you know. I didn't. More trouble, more trouble, you know. Or sometimes, maybe if I become a better, you know, if I just be a good father or a good husband, all my problems, you know, I tried more and more, harder and harder and harder. You talk about passionate, you know, working and working and working and working, didn't get any better. In fact, you know, you know those people who get angry easily is, are those people who, who try hard, very hard. You know, the, the harder you try and fail, the more angry you get, you know. As you all know, I, my mouth is very dirty, you know. It used to be, not anymore. But I'm thinking, why was my, you know, why was I be so? It's because I try. I try very hard to live my life better, you know. Better, better, better. And the more I try harder, you know, it, it gets more frustrated I get. You know, why, you know, all that. And then one day, I met God. I really met. And I, I realized, oh my goodness, that Jesus was God himself. Similar thing happened to me. That Jesus, that Jesus was the Christ. I knew about Jesus. You know, living in 21st century, I knew Jesus. I'm a, you know, I'm a sophisticated person. I went to church once a month and, you know, I knew about Jesus. But it never just, you know, it never occurred to me that Jesus had to be God himself. But somehow it happened to me. And it, it just clicked. It clicked. I didn't change much, you know. It clicks. And when that clicked, everything started falling into places. Didn't mean that I didn't, you know, I stopped working or, you know, didn't mean I didn't. It just, it just made much better sense then on. Oh, this is how life works. And that's what, what happening. That's what's happening with Saul. It's not really, it's not really theologically heavy here. It's very simple. Saul was making a very simple mistake. Was it his fault? I don't know. I mean, was he, was he stupid? I don't think so. He was just, he was doing his best. You know, he was just living very hard. He's thinking, I want to get closer to God. I want to serve him. I want to serve him, you know. And the only way to serve him, to him, was to follow the law. And that's what he's saying, you know. And all the prophets were saying, however, God in his heart was not that, you know, he, that's not his, his purpose. In the Old Testament, many times, God says, you love me. Okay? You love me with all your heart and mind and soul. You know, he, he says that all the time. In other words, God was saying in his way of saying it is, if you love me, keep all these, these laws. If you, if you don't love me, you're not going to, you know, keep the law, so I'm going to teach you. That's what he was saying. But People misunderstood, especially Saul misunderstood. Saul was thinking, if I just keep the law, if I just make the money, if I just work hard, if I just become famous, if I just you know, could be a good father, then all my problems would, would go away. A lot of people think like that. I was. And I tried. I tried. And you know, those of us who try hard, we know how frustrated it gets. You know, despite of all this, you know, I mean, every time I buy a car to my wife, am I the best husband? And she never acknowledges, no, 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 no. I mean, she says, not three times, she says about ten times straight out, she's like a machine gun, you know, no, 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 no. It just drove me crazy, you know. I mean, what? And misunderstood. It's a very simple mistake. And then I realized, oh my goodness, that's not what you want. That's not how it works. And then somehow I met God. One day I met God. He said, oh my goodness, Jesus Christ is my God. Once it realized, then it's much easier to become a good citizen. Wouldn't it? Once I realized, my king is there. My king is there. Once I realized that, you know, everything else. It's okay. It's okay. These things happen. It's okay. I don't get upgraded. It's okay. <laughs> so, Jamie asked me during the break, you know, he said, Dad, 
how can six people get upgraded? <laughs> and I say, I don't know. <laughs> Never happened to me, so I don't know. <laughs> but back of my head, guess what I say? It's okay. It's okay. Everything, it's okay. Why? As long as Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, it's okay. And then, with that mindset, I start looking at the things. And oh my goodness, I was mistaken. I was mistaken. You know when, when you raise a kid, when they're about four years old, they think they know everything. They know everything, you know. And they're about teenagers. They are like Einstein's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the eyes of grown-up, <laughs> you, you don't know anything yet. But as we grow, one day we realize, oh my goodness, life is very simple. Life is nothing but a mist. If God gives me a life, I must glorify him. When that clicks, we are at the final stage. And God says, you are home now. And I want, I want all of us really be a good citizen of kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? And how do we do that? Truly knowing that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Personally, truly feel that Jesus upon that cross is my Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for saving all of us. And many of us have been trying so hard, so hard. Sometimes we get persecuted. Sometimes we make mistakes. But it has been a very difficult time. But Lord, I, I ask you, Reveal yourself to us so that we can see you. We can feel you. Finally, we can know you as you know us. And Saul truly met Jesus on the way to Damascus. May we truly meet you just like Saul and realize it doesn't require a trip it doesn't require an event but may we see you may we know you thank you so much Lord we are about to give you our offering may it be given unto you but there are so many things to do I ask you God would you bless this church that we can truly accomplish what you have bestowed upon us. We want to glorify you. We truly want to lift up your name, Lord. Allow us, use us to be used by you, Lord. Thank you so much. I pray all these in the name of Jesus. Amen.